Welcome to Christmas Eve at Hollywood United Methodist Church. We are glad you have joined us for this service in celebration of the coming of the Christ child. In just a moment, you will hear from our retired Bishop, Mary Ann Swenson and her husband, Jeff, and then we will descend into darkness, waiting for the light to appear. Come and let us adore him. Christmas, Merry Christmas. Of course, we have joy when we ride our tandem bicycle, but we ride our tandem bicycle every day, but that gives us so much joy to be out and about. I think this Christmas season, because it's been such a difficult year, I think the thing that's giving me so much joy is anticipating the great Christmas star, thinking about how Saturn and Jupiter are going to align to form the star that the wise men saw on their way to Bethlehem. And I remember when I got to take a group of us from the Hollywood Church to Bethlehem and to imagine and to think about the wise men following that star and how the star guided them. So for all of us, it's like the light that will break and guide us through this darkness until there is fullness of light. That's what I'm thinking about for true joy this Christmas.
Well, Merry Christmas Eve, everyone. I am here with all of the children from the Hollywood United Methodist Church Children's Ministry. I'm also here with Reverend Lauren Dunkel and Ms. Zuki Yulian, and we are here today to talk a little bit about the story of Jesus's birth, and we are celebrating Christmas Eve, even though we're recording this when it's not Christmas Eve. So here are some of our wonderful children, and I have a question for you, as I often do. And my question is, what is one thing you are afraid of? What is one thing you're afraid of? Raise your hand when you're ready, when you've got your answer, and I will call on you. Think about what you're afraid of. Ooh, hmm. Oh, thankfully. All right, good, here we go. Finally got some hands. We'll start with you, Alan. What is? What are you afraid of? I'm usually afraid of like a shark. Sharks. Like a shark yeah. that has like a blood on them. Yeah, that can be very scary. Thank you, Alan. Um, Sadie, what is something you're afraid of? Falling off of tall things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Falling off of tall things. That's great. Yes, that happens. Okay, Noah, what are you afraid of? Heights. Heights? It's like, like being really high? Yeah, that's kind of like Sadie's. I have that one too. Yeah, Maddie, what about you? Um, sometimes I'm afraid of glass because it could shatter. Oh, sure. Once, so you're, once you're, a wine glass fell and I was bare feet. Yeah, so being afraid of dropping a glass or something like that, absolutely. So I am going to ask you to all, let's all show our, when I say on the count of three, our afraid face. So if it is, if you're afraid of falling off of something or you're afraid of heights or you're afraid of glass or whatever you're afraid of, I need to see your I'm afraid face. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay, whew. Well, in the Christmas story, <laughs> we hear the message over and over again, which is the angels come and they say something to help us with our fear. Does anybody know what we hear the angels say over and over again in the Christmas story? Anyone have a guess? I will tell you. The angels say, do not be afraid. Over and over, that's the message. That's the message to Mary. It's the message to Joseph. It's the message to the shepherds in the field. Do not be afraid. There are lots of things to be afraid of, and I bet your parents this year talked about a couple other things, right? We know that this year we were all afraid of the coronavirus. Maybe in your family, people were talking about the election as something to be afraid of. You might even have heard coming up Georgia. So there are lots of things to be afraid of, but the message that we're going to hold on to this year in the Christmas story, there are so many messages in the Christmas story, but this year, we really want to hold on to that do not be afraid that God has brought us good news and that good news came in the form of this baby born in a manger, that Jesus is the good news for our world, no matter what it is that we are afraid of. He is light, he is peace, and he is love. And each of us this Christmas, we should hold on to that belief and that fact that God loves us, and that nothing can separate us from that, that love. No heights, no broken glass, no coronavirus, no politics, nothing can separate us from that love, and we can hold on to that and be thankful for it. So now, on the count of three, I wanna see your face knowing that God loves you. All right, one, two, three. <sighs> God loves you. God loves all of us. Merry, Merry Christmas. Let's, let's all unmute and say Merry Christmas to our church family, okay? Everybody unmute, and when I count to three, we will say our Merry Christmas. There we go. One, two, three. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you.
It's almost Christmas time. It's almost time for the fire to arrange. Cause it's gonna be cold outside. Yeah. Merry Christmas for the Toad to Terra family. Christmas 2020, it couldn't have got here fast enough. But here we are, and think about it. The joy that we experienced in the past, the joy that we have found this year, but more importantly, the joy that we'll experience as we move forward into 2021. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas to you, everyone. Merry Make one person smile, just one stranger every day, and you make a huge difference in spreading joy in this world and making it a happier place. So from our family to all of your families, please enjoy this video on the celebration of joy. Let us now be in an attitude of prayer together. Gracious and loving creator, we come to you on this special night to gather in worship and praise. Although we may not be physically together, our desire is to lift up your name with friend, family and stranger. At the start of all times, you began your work of creation with the word. And tonight we anticipate the birth of that word made flesh. 
We join our voices together on this holiest of nights with the everlasting chorus in praise and gratitude. Glory to God in the highest. We are blessed with the knowledge that you love us so much that you became one of us, God with us. Tonight, we bring to mind those stories which remind us of your constant and unchanging love, which assures us you never give up on your children. And yet, even as we celebrate that amazing love, we acknowledge there are many who are still waiting for you in their lives and many whom we need to offer up to you. Those who do not have adequate food and shelter, the world which needs so badly peace and the end of violence, those who are grieving, those who are marginalized and oppressed, those suffering from broken relationships, those suffering from chronic illnesses, those who need to renew their heart, mind or body, those in the grips of substance abuse, all those affected by the pandemic of COVID-19 and all those working so hard to care for the suffering and dying and their families, for those who have lost loved ones in the past year, for those who struggle with mental illness, for those who work on Christmas, for those who cannot make it home for Christmas this year. We ask you, God, for the courage to be your hands and feet in this world and to share the peace coming to us in the manger this evening. May we know your presence with us as we walk through these times in all that we do and in all that we are. May we be filled with your spirit so we are able to share the grace we find with everyone we encounter. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given us, Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
Hi, this is Mike Manning. This Christmas season, I am finding joy by spending time with family and loved ones, spending time with my dogs, and eating gingerbread cookies. Lots and lots of gingerbread cookies. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. Well, this was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Well, all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. Well, he went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. Well, while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Well, in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Well, then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Word of God, words of life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hey, church family, it's Polly here. Um, 
really miss seeing everybody. On I, it's been you know, decades since I haven't spent uh, Christmas with you guys. Um, I'm really grateful for our ability and everyone behind the scenes that are making these videos for us so we can sort of be together. Um, it's tough. It's so tough. Everything's so tough this year. And, you know, when I was asked about, like, finding joy, it's like, I think, I think, you know, sometimes it's just as simple as looking around you and just finding things, little things. You know, it could be anything, your pet, your family, your friend, a, a good book, you know, anything. Um, and also I've had so many conversations about how would we possibly be doing this if we weren't people of faith? I'm just so grateful to have that in my life and that involves all of us, the beloved community, um, to be able to walk through these kind of tough, tough times and be able to know that we have God at our side and we have our faith to lean on and our church family to lean on. Um, that is, we're very blessed. And that is something that I definitely find joy in. So God bless all of you and happy holidays. You know, I think this is the first Christmas Eve that I haven't been in church, in any church, since I was a little girl. As Polly says, it's just tough that we can't be together, whether it's in church or together with our families. You know, we know that staying home and staying apart, it's the right thing to do. It's the loving thing to do to try and quash this pandemic, especially here in Los Angeles County. But let's name it. It's just tough. We miss this. We miss the crowd and the candles. We miss the music and the singing. We miss seeing our kids. And we miss our worship and arts team. So let's go back in time a few years to a time when our children told their own unique version of the Christmas story and the adults tried to act it out. Mary was watering her garden. An angel comes down. The angel said, I'm going to have a baby. Oh my God. <laughs> Joseph's like, what? That's strange. I don't want to marry you. Good luck having your baby. Bye. Oh, come on. I want you to marry me. And then maybe she's like, Mary, I'm sorry, but I uh, have to go. He has a dream of an angel coming down. I've been sent by God, and I'm here to tell you that you are having a baby. And you must name him Jesus or else. Uh. I didn't know you were pregnant. I told you. What? <laughs> End of convo. I will stay with you because I need that baby to save the world. <laughs> okay, so where's the ring? She feels excited. Scared? Anxious to know how the baby will be. They got the Bethlehem on donkey. Donkey. Hey, Mary, how are you doing? <laughs> Scared. <laughs> None of the houses would accept them. Can I have a room? There's no room. Sorry. Mm. Yeah. So they had to stay in a farm. Do you have a room? I have a um. Barn in the back of my house. Okay. Bye. You're gonna have to sleep in a barn. What? Oh, just like you said. You got me. Shepherds are in the field watching their sheep. And then an angel comes down. There is a baby that is born. 
that will save the world. And then a bunch of other angels with instruments and sing a song like... Let's go find the super baby. If he's so super, why can't he just invent teleportation right now and we can just get there super quick? What's teleportation? I don't know. They, like, they're astronomers. They're, like, minding their own business, doing whatever they do. And then they see a star, so they think it's special, and they go. I looked it up on um, Google. Me too. <laughs> So they followed the North Star all the way to where, where Jesus was. Let's give him presents! A coloring book, crayons, their bank account, candles, gold, frankincense, stuff. and myrrh. Do you have a super baby? Do you have eyes? He's right there. Who are these people? Get out of here. I'm not trying to have a baby, and I know you. Why is everybody coming here? Meh. We're gonna name you Jesus. You're a beautiful boy. I would say I love you. Jesus was born in a farm. That day is now called Christmas. I think my favorite line is at the end when Mary says, I'm trying to have a baby. What are all these people doing here? Well, they were doing then what we are doing tonight, celebrating the birth of Emmanuel, God with us, of God's powerful love for each of us and for all of us. Hear the good news of this holy night. We might all be at home, but through the miracle of technology, we are able to be together virtually our hearts join to celebrate God's great love for all of us. God's good news for you and for me, for all the world that is born this night in the city of Bethlehem, a savior, Christ the Lord. And here's even more good news. Jesus, the son of God was not born majestically into wealth or power. Jesus was not born to affirm the status quo but rather to dramatically transform us and our lives and our priorities. Jesus is born this night so that we will experience the power of Emmanuel, of God with us, of God born among us, of God loving us so powerfully and fully that God chose to be born in a smelly stable to a poor immigrant teenage mother and her confused, frightened fiance on their long mandated journey to be counted in the Roman census. Tonight we rejoice because we know not only the baby Jesus, but the adult he grows up to be. The Jesus who teaches us how to live and love God and one another. A radical life-changing Christ. The child born this night will grow up to be the Messiah who will walk on water and feed 5,000 with just a few loaves of bread and some fish who will heal people of their diseases and cast out demons, who will party at a wedding where he turns water into wine, who will weep bitterly when his best friend dies and then call him back to life, who will teach us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us, who will constantly challenge the political and religious authorities over issues of justice and righteousness, who loves us all without exception, so very much, that he endured death on a cross so that we might know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that in the words of the great Frederick Beekner, suffering and death will not have the last word, only love will. This is the Christ who is born this night, the light of the world that the darkness can never overcome. Amen? Amen. Now tonight's sermon title, Hear the Angel Voices, is a line from the hymn, O Holy Night, which was sung a bit earlier so beautifully by Cheryl Johnson Hartwell. The story behind the song is lengthy and is intricate,
but it's worthy of attention. So I encourage you to spend some time in the 12 days of Christmas finding out more about it. But in a nutshell, O Holy Night was commissioned in the mid 1800s by a forgotten parish priest in France. It was written by a poet who would later split from the church. It was put to music by a Jewish composer and then it was brought to Americans by an abolitionist Unitarian minister to spotlight the sinfulness of slavery, as well as to tell the story of the birth of a savior. And now it's one of our most cherished Christmas carols. It speaks not only of the salvific nature of the Christ child, but also the need for us to be active participants in bringing forth the beloved community that Christ's birth proclaims. The preaching professor Thomas Long tells a great story about how we can be active participants. He tells of a Christmas pageant as a small church in which the part of the innkeeper at Bethlehem was played by a high school student. He was a quiet and polite boy, but the term awkward pretty much applied. His peers liked him well enough, but he was the sort of person who could be easily overlooked. Well, when the pageant was going on, when Joseph and Mary appeared at the inn, he stood awkwardly in the doorway, something a bit towards the couple as they made their request for lodging. He then dutifully recited his one line, there is no room in the inn. But as Mary and Joseph turned and walked wearily toward the cattle stall where they would spend the night, the boy continued to watch them with his eyes filled with compassion. Suddenly responding to a grace, though not part of the script, filled the moment. He called out to them, startling himself, them, and the audience, and said, wait a minute, don't go. You can have my room. And that is why, Long says, when all is said and done, those Christmas pageants in church fellowship halls and basements and sanctuaries, and I personally would add, and videos, perhaps capture the Christmas story best. They are, like Luke's gospel, pictures of what happens to unremarkable people in a dark world when suddenly, and in ways they don't fully understand, the glory of the Lord shines down upon them. Like the characters in Luke, the players in these pageants do not pretend to express the light. They only try to reflect it. Well, beloved ones, that is our calling this Christmas, to reflect the light of Christ in this world, to have compassion and love for others so that the kingdom of God, the beloved community of Emmanuel, is realized. We need to reflect the light of Christ, because we know that there is a powerful darkness at work in our world today, a darkness that prefers earthly powers and principalities instead of trusting in the Prince of Peace. It's a darkness that rejects concern for the common good and instead prioritizes individual gain, a darkness that calls for dehumanizing instead of welcoming the stranger in our midst. It's a darkness that casts aside truth in favor of conspiracy theories, a darkness that rejects integrity, morality, and ethics as important and necessary values for a civil society. It's a darkness that craves chaos and division and bids us deem those with whom we disagree not just unworthy, but evil. It's a darkness that exalts the worst of humanity, systemic racism and oppression for political gain and power. But there's good news in Christmas that God's promise of Emmanuel, of God with us, God comes to us so we can embrace and embody what the prophet Isaiah foretold. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light you see, the promise of God's love incarnated in the Christ child gives us hope for a new tomorrow, which will come when we open ourselves 
to hear again the angel voices. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. Do not be afraid. As Mr. Kevin told our kids earlier, that is the message that the angels told the shepherds, told Mary, told Joseph, and tells us this night. Do not be afraid. Hear the good news of great joy. Christ is born. But let us not just hear the angel voices. Let us be the angel voices proclaiming the good news of the Christ child in this broken and hurting world. Let us be the voice of hope for a world weary of the coronavirus pandemic. As the vaccines that rolled out last week offer hope for an end to illness and death, may we encourage and lift one another up as we continue to stay at home and stay safer until we can all be inoculated. Let us be the voice of peace in a nation in which the sin of systemic racism continues to be manifest and is so much further from being eradicated than we had hoped. And not just in police departments, but in business, in the media, in the entertainment industry, and yes, in the church. May we continue to call and act for peace with justice for all God's children. Let us be the voice of joy that finds happiness in all the ways we have heard in our videos this evening. That of Bishop Swinson, Mike Manning, the Tatera family, and Polly Perrett. May we also find joy in serving each other this Christmas and throughout the new year. Perhaps as checking in on an elderly neighbor to see if he or she needs a porch drop off. Perhaps it's volunteering with the Hollywood Food Coalition as they are currently occupying our main kitchen in Grant Hall to do redistribution of foodstuffs to about 49 nonprofits in the greater Los Angeles area, but concentrated in Hollywood. Perhaps it's advocating with our elected officials on behalf of our neighbors who call the streets home, who are in need of shelter and services on a daily basis. Let us be the voice of love that proclaims that all are welcome in this place. Virtual for now, but together soon, we hope. Our general conference may or may not meet in 2021, which leaves the current general church prohibition on LGBTQ ordination and marriage equality in effect. You know, we know there's going to be a future welcoming and affirming Methodist church of some iteration. We know that. We don't know when it will be, but we know it's coming. But until that time, we know what we are going to do as Hollywood United Methodist Church. Our ministries of love are going to continue unabated. Nothing's gonna change in that arena, even though we're online, that's the only difference. But we will continue to welcome all persons into the membership and the leadership of our community of faith. I will continue to marry church members of the same gender in our sanctuary when it's safe to do so. The red ribbons on our tower, now in their 27th year, proclaim to all that we continue to be a beacon of hope and love in the heart of Hollywood, feeding the hungry, housing the homeless, and working for justice for all God's people. So as we draw to a close this evening and prepare to sing Silent Night together, hear again the angel voices. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to risk out in love. Do not be afraid to speak truth to power. Do not be afraid to take the vaccine. Do not be afraid to look for the next chapter in your life. Do not be afraid to be who you are and who God created you to be, a beloved child of God. Do not be afraid on this beautiful, holy night because God is with us. Do not be afraid for we will be together again one day. Merry Christmas.
celebrate the wonder of the Christ child. May you hear the angel voices. May you know that even though we are at home, you are not alone. And may you know that God loves you this night and always. Merry Christmas.